can tell you Kaisodo because you know uh, you can uh, you can you can pay that much and you lose the ball like that. I was going to ask they, you about they, him, yeah. yeah. And and they are blaming Thiago Silva. Some Chelsea players are blaming. Th- you don't blame Thiago Silva for that. There was no need for Kaisedo to lose that ball. You know that when you look as as a number six, as a holding midfielder, once you lose the ball and you are playing a top team, you they're going to punish you for that. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on what part of the world you are viewing from. Welcome to Transit TV Big Six Review. This weekend, we all know, is the international break from all major leagues in Europe. There's not going to be any league games this weekend. So we're taking time to look at the Big Six teams in England, especially being Manchester City, Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Tottenham Hotspur. We're looking at these six big teams in England, talking about how they have performed, starting from the way they conducted their transfer window this summer, how well they have done, or how badly they have done this in these first four games before the transfer, before the international break. The coaches, the tactics they have uh, deployed to help their team win games as those uh, styles and tactics worked have they not worked so in this one we're going to be talking to fans of these individual clubs to get their thinking about what and how their team has performed so far in these first four weeks of the season so stay with us and uh, enjoy the show don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit the like button and share this content. Also, get busy in the comment section and let us know what you feel about your fellow fans, what they have said about the club, about the players, about the coaches, about the performance so far. We also will try to get the expectation going forward as the, as the, the league resumes in a couple of weeks' time. So sit down and enjoy the show. And don't forget to let us know what you think. Let's go. <laughs> Chelsea in the house, man. <laughs> Tim always says that uh, he's been tag teamed today. Today, you guys are tag teaming me. <laughs> it's always good to it's always good to feel like you have a partner, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, because um, you always like to be in that position where when you say something, somebody will say, yes, you're right. You're, yes, you're right. But sometimes fans too find themselves now. <laughs> well, it's an in-house. I wish, I, wish, I, I wish some of you will see what we go through in our Chelsea Forum. We are big enemies, but anytime we, any us oh, now, my new fans, Show up. Shows up. You will you see that our, <laughs> our anger is not in the blood. It's just a mere expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was nice to see you, man. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yes, viewers, welcome to the Big Six Review. The first for the season after four games. Normally, we know big, big leagues in Europe go on a break after four games to allow players to go attend international engagements, national teams for qualifiers, friendlies, and whatever. EPL is not exempted in this one. After four games, there is a break this weekend. We're not having any league games this weekend. So we're taking this time to bring to you from inside the house, from in-house, like Chima just mentioned, you know what is going on in the big six uh, teams in EPL. What has you know starting from their transfer activities over the summer, the ones that have you know gotten a new coach, the new what, what the new coach has you know imparted in the team so far, how the team has performed, which uh, tactics or however they have performed going into the four games they have played so far, what the results are you know could not. And try to find out from the fans as well, because regardless of what we read out there, fans always have first-hand information about what's going on in their in their teams. So I just want to feel fans of different clubs, Manchester City, Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, and Tottenham Hotspur. And with me here today are two 
very uh team i would say full-blooded chelsea fans very good friends that i've known we've bantered you know happily and angrily against each other and today i have brothers and chima with me in the studio to look into chelsea season so far after four games chelsea has played four games lost two and won two and they are sitting pretty much uh, 12th on the table. What is your, your welcome to the show? Hey, th- thank you for having me. It's been a while. I've been trying to um, get on the show, um, but due to time constraint, and I have not been able to. But I watch your shows and I've seen most of the time. You guys just want to <laughs> kill my uh, my fellow Chelsea fan. Yeah, I see all that going on, but it's good today I'm here. So thank you, viewers. Uh, let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah, Chima, welcome to the show. <laughs> You've been trying your best to host well on behalf of your fellow Chelsea fans. Today, Bados is here. I can see your beaming with smile while I sit down here and wait for the bullets if any comes. And uh, we'll go from there. It's nice to see you again, Chima. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you, viewers. Um, thank you, um, the moderator. I'm happy to have uh, one of our own. I know that in Chelsea world, we always say that our blood is blue. My blue brother, I'm happy to see you here. Fans, I want you guys to pay attention. You know, this is no longer a situation where I am being tagged, teamed by Asna fans and Asna supporters or what I would call them, Asna leaning, you know, analysts and commentators. This time around, we are here to, you know, I mean, to do justice. You know, the most important thing I've always said that is in that, what, I, what I've always said is, um, you that know, I'm, objective. A, Said it yeah, I'm, a, I'm a die HSE fan, but that doesn't mean when it comes to, you know, being objective and saying it without being malicious, because what gets me, you know, hyped up is when, all these Arsenal fans, when they get here and they wave chase with a wave of hand, it get me, you know, it get my blood boiling. But viewers, well, yeah, well, well, Chiba, what I've noticed about you is uh, you like to say the truth or say what is wrong with Chelsea. You only want to hear it from your mouth. If somebody else tells you exactly the same thing, you get uh, emotional about it. You say the same thing, but when it comes from somebody else's mouth, you, you say they are, they are talking to you. Okay, yeah, let's get on with the show. I'm going to start, but let me start with you. Let's, you know, do give me on top of your head, you know, a general overview of your impression about Chelsea so far going you know, in this in this season after four games. Well, com- um, compared to last season, um, every Chelsea fan should be uh, should be happy with what we are seeing. Chelsea right now is a, is a team. In transition, so it's going to take time. But uh, Pochettino is not going to do magic. Is you know, football is, is is a team sport, so it will take a while for all the players to gel. It's only been four games in the season. Most of these guys haven't played together before. Those few of them played in preseason, which is different. They haven't played together in any competitive game except these uh, four games that they have played. So. Um, it's gonna be a while, but every Chelsea fan should be uh, should be excited uh, compared to what we saw last season. Uh, last season we couldn't uh, move the ball, we couldn't score goals, we couldn't create chances. But this season, Chelsea Chelsea is creating chances. The only problem is the goals are not coming. But I I, I am I am hopeful. I I know that the goals will come. Uh, it will come uh, because. These guys are ready to play, you know. Uh, Todd Bolly decided to go for for the future, for the potential, for a young player. So it will take a while. It's not going to be magic, but I believe that Chelsea will come through at the end of the season. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Chima, let me go to you. Oh, one of the big uh, talking points for Chelsea in the last uh, 18 months has been transfer activities. The way Chelsea has conducted their transfer activities. Uh, what have you made of it, and what impact do you think 
it has made, you know, considering the performances we have seen so far, and what would you have expected them to do differently if there is any? Well, I, um, before, like, my co, my, my partner, my brother, my blue brother, you know, said, you know, last season we were stopped. We, you know, it was like, we're not going forward, we're not going backward. You know, he's, even watching Chelsea games sometimes, in our Chelsea forum, we fight like, you know, we fight like enemies. But um, it, it, it got done to us that some of these players that we had last season, some of them, you know, the, the spirit is not in the team. Their body, you know, their body is in the team, but their spirits were so well. I made mention of a lot of players that needed to go because they were not putting in effort, you know, they were not motivated. I was happy for Jojinho going. I was happy for, for Kai going. A whole bunch of Chelsea players that, you know, an average Chelsea fan wanted them to wanted them to go. Not that they are not good players, but it seems they are their mental mindset is no longer in Chelsea team. The only two players that an average Chelsea fan will not, you know, will feel, you know, a little not comfortable for their living is players like Kante and uh, and Kovacic. Kovacic. Yeah, Kovacic, you know, and Kante. So but other ones, you know, we were not killing ourselves for their living. But um, the, the, you know, the signings this season... You know, like my uh, my blue brother said, you know, it was Todd was going for looking for young players to build the team. My concern in the signings, I I wouldn't know or I'm not sure if Poch, if his input was, you know, if he had input in some of these players that we got, you know, if I I always tell people that um, if you buy a player like Nicholas, who have seen has a whole lot of prospects. But such players, when you buy players from other leagues coming to premiership, you don't immediately throw them to the lion. You know, you introduce them. You introduce them maybe, you know, 70 minutes, you bring them in, let them stay at the bench and watch how fast-paced, how, you know, determined defenders are. You know, let him just feel the stadium, feel the game from outside. You know, let him feel it so that whenever he comes in, he already knew what he's expecting. I think um, player, or another player again, this player that we, we bought from, uh, from this our uh, number two defender, this our, uh, you know, the Sassi. Yeah. I think the Sassi also is another player that is, you know, that is a, a good buy, but I would have loved this situation where he, he is brought in, you know, maybe two, let him stay, stay at the bench and watch two, three games of Chelsea. Then the fourth game, you introduce him, you know, introducing him gradually. These are very good players, but I felt like they were thrown to Lion Den without, you know, knowing exactly what they are, you know, what they are getting into. And that made them not fully come into their full potentials. But like my blue brother said, you know, this is not our first rodeo. We are, it's just the beginning of the, the league. They were all acclimatized. Yeah, what does, uh, Let's yeah. stay right there on the transfers. Like Tim rightly said, oh, Toboli probably in the beginning, like I said, for 18 months ago since they took over, he, he has been signing players left, right, and center, as many say. And it looked like there was no strategy. It, it looked like they were just on the study in other uh, rival clubs. Once they go for a player, Chelsea goes there, you know, add 10 million and take the player. Until Poch came in this uh, I remember very well Thiago Silva mentioned at the end of the season that uh, Chelsea needed to trim down the squad, you know, let that there were too many players in the squad and he didn't understand this, what the strategy was. And uh, everybody felt that that was going to be the case going into the summer. But, you know, surprisingly, Chelsea went again on a shopping spree, buying more players, even having more than what uh, was in the squad before. So looking at the transfer, uh, and again, the biggest worry for me, looking in from outside, that Chelsea spent all this money and you still don't have an established striker in the squad who by now, if you did, probably Chelsea would be in a different uh, fortune because it's been difficult for you guys to put the ball in the net. So what, what was the overall rating about the transfer activities and what could you know, Chelsea have done differently if there's anyone? 
Well, uh, I di- I disagree with you when you say third bowling when buying players or other things wanted to buy. You know, I don't think so. I think he has a you know he has a strategy. One thing as uh, uh, some some other people are saying, uh, what they're thinking is that Chase is just spending money. Nobody's talking about the money the man also recouped. Uh, Todd Bowley has gotten at least almost $300 million from the sales of other players. So the, our net spend is not even, you know, it's not, it's not like he broke the bank, no. But as far as transfer is concerned, like I said earlier, he wants to go through the... He doesn't want to establish... A, it's not like he doesn't have money to go and buy a hurricane. No, he has money, but they have a plan. And their plan is to look for the next 10 years. And that is what they have done. When you look at the signings they have done, they, they are giving them eight, seven, eight years contract, which means mm-hmm. you are going to finish your career in Chelsea. Somebody like Modric is going to finish in Chelsea. He's 22 or so. He has eight years contract. That would be like 30 years old. So you're, all these players they are signing, they're not looking... Uh, uh, Tobot is not thinking, oh, they're not going to be... You know, they, they won't come through. Uh, you you know you don't go to the market uh, thinking that uh, okay you're make profit. Yeah, sorry to interject right there. Let me stop you. Just like what uh, Chima was saying in the beginning, at some point last season, it was established that most Chelsea players had their mind as they were no longer interested in what was going on in the club and they wanted to leave. So what you're saying, yes, I I hear you. If it goes right, that would be good for Chelsea. But what if it goes wrong? Now these players have eight years contract. What if a year, two years down the line, they're no longer interested in, you know, they lose their form or they're unprofessional. Look at what's happening in Man United right now. Sancho was signed for 80 million. He's earning 220 million, mm-hmm. two, uh, 350,000 pounds a week. And he refuses to train. And you have eight players like that in the squad behaving this way. No team is going to pay you that money. No team is going to take this player and pay them that sal- those salaries. So, and again, this football, if you agree with me, this game is a result-based game. If you're not winning now, nobody is willing to wait for you four years from now to to for the, those players to come through and start to win trophies. So mm-hmm. the, it, that's why I, I feel the balance is not right because Chelsea need to get it right now at least to honest and stay, if not win the titles, if not win the trophy, but stay close to whoever that is up there so that it, it's easy for the players to see the reason to stay in the team and as well, you know, see at their contract. I don't know what you what you think, because it could go either way. Well, like I said, nothing is in gra- no, nothing is granted in life. It, it, tomorrow is not even granted. So when you do business, you have to factor in your losses. Todd Bowley and the board they they decided they want to go that route, and that's what they have done. So whether somebody like Modric will come through, it's not uh, uh it's not their fault anymore. So you have to cut your losses. There's no no question about it. You can't, you can't sign players that long. They started that way. And if you look at other teams, they started to give contracts of five, six, seven years now. Mm-hmm. I was looking at, I think, uh, someone like Declan Rance is about five years contract. Yeah. Before, he, they wouldn't give him that kind of contract. So other teams are beginning to learn from Chelsea. As far as if these players will come through, that I do not know. It doesn't matter because they are coming from other other yeah, leagues, yeah. other leagues. Uh, some of them will come through. I remember when we bought Sheshenko from AC Milan. He didn't come through. I remember when we bought uh, Fernando Torres, even though he was mm-hmm. playing in the Premier mm-hmm. League. Yeah, it didn't come through. So, uh, at some point, you have to make a decision, and that's what they have done. Uh, do I think it's right? I don't think so, because sometimes. You can see what happened to Hazard in, in, in Real Madrid. Yeah. Over 120 million uh, pounds. Gone down the drain, yeah. Gone down the drain. He can't even play. For the whole, how many seasons he's been there, he only scored four goals. So, uh, as far as contract, that's how it goes. When you get your contract, you, you don't have pressure. I think they are looking at, if we give these guys a uh, long contract, they don't have pressure to perform or to, you know, to in the next two years they will be seeking to to to, uh, to live or something like that. So that's that's what I think they did. But as far as them coming through, I don't know. But I believe they signed some quality players. 
I believe somebody like Modric is good. He's going to mm -hmm. come through. But Poch has to give that guy time. He has to give him, what do I mean, minutes. He's not giving them the, the guy minutes. Modric has to play. He has to play. When you play, you have confidence. And when he scores his first goal, the goals will come. Somebody like Jackson is a good uh, uh, player. He just needs somebody to feed him the ball. Like I said earlier, still we still don't have the creative midfielder that we're looking for. The number 10. Depending on the on the formation Poch wants to play, we still look for. I mean, I don't mind you guys giving us Odegaard, but you know what I mean. But <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know if he was able. Uh, but we are looking for a player like that. That can. I, I remember when I seen signed that guy. I know all the things that the banter that you threw. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I I know, but you can see that he 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 has covered that uh, space right there. If Saka is not scoring, he will score. If uh, Ma, uh, is not, is a, so you have somebody that will score. And we don't have that. I think Chukwe Mecca was about to start doing that, but I don't know how, you know, mm -hmm. injury, you know, some of these things. Yeah, that's true. Uh, somebody like Nkuku, I believe he will come through maybe by mm -hmm. November or December. So mm -hmm. right now, what Poch and the team need to do is to just stay uh, closer to the top. You know, exactly. that's what I'm to, saying. That's where experience yeah, comes they, in. Yeah, they have to go up the table. They have to. They have to win their next game against Beaumont. It, that should be... You have to win it. So you have to uh, stay closer to the top. That way, when your players are back, like Chelsea has about, I think, about nine or so players out. Yeah, that is that's, a, huge, that's, that's, a, lot, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot, a lot. So when those guys come back, you don't want to be so far out from the top. But like I told you earlier, I still believe... Chase is going to win the Premier League. I'm going. I'm, I'm bullish on that. This Based season. on what I've said, this season, I'm bullish on that, and I'm not backing down. Chase will win the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what you might think, but I believe that. I tell you that every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jim, before you respond to that. Based on what Wados was saying about the selling of players, my little other concern I have about this the the strategy that Chelsea had deployed is that you know, like as now this. This transfer window that just closed. From nowhere, there was a rumor that Gabriel wanted to leave Arsenal and go to Saudi Arabia or something like or Real Madrid. The reason was because uh what's his name? His partner Saliba contract was going to end next summer. And Arsenal of obviously had to renegotiate with him and gave him a new contract. And, and he said the, the guy had said he was wanted to be one of the you know, biggest earners in Arsenal because of what the cutter they gave to, to Saka. And he's he is earning way, almost if not three times what Gabriel is earning. So Gabriel from nowhere said, well, his agents are asking for a review because he signed his own contract last last season and he was okay with it. And that's now stood their ground that no, uh, bro, he just signed this contract. I don't think it's time for us to have a review. So that's the problem with giving these players eight years contract. Two years from now, or how or I don't care how much Chelsea has offered to Modric. I don't care how much they have offered to Caicedo. Two years from now, those those salaries are going to look like he, he, they, they were cheated. So if by that time they, they these players start to you know call for review of their contract, this can also bring or raise a brow in the in the team and cause the same problem Chelsea was having before. So that's my own concern. I don't know what you think about about that. And obviously. Regardless of how well these players do, next summer, January, next summer, the other summer, Chelsea is going to sign players. And they're going to sign those players based on the going rate for players of their quality and salaries and sign-on fees, which is going to, you know, also cause some of these problems. I don't know what you think about, about that before you react to what uh, Badu was saying about winning the league. Well, 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 what you said is right, but you understand also that... Uh... It's not always the case that the that players have the upper hand. See what is happening to, to Lukaku, you know. If you are in that situation where you now feel like, uh, you know, you must hold the your team yeah, by the balls, you know, then you go the route of Lukaku. Look at Lukaku. It's like, it's like you know, he is uh, like a bat. You know, the, the the animals on the top are not looking for him. The ones on the floor is not looking for him. You know, he is like confusing. You know? so, yeah, so but if you look at it very well, sorry to call you, if you look at it very well, Chelsea is actually losing in that deal because Chelsea paid, I think, $100 million for Lukaku. 
The first year they loaned him to Inter Milan and got 10 million. This season now he's gone to Roma for the same amount. And there's a release clause in his con in that contract that Chelsea will allow or accept an offer at 8 million by next summer if anybody comes in. And in the day, Chelsea has thrown about 50 million away and he never really played for Chelsea. Because once you have a player that doesn't want to stay in the club, anyhow you want to look at it, you are in a bad situation because nobody will want to pay the value for the player because they know you're desperate to release that player. So and when you have a lot of players in this situation, I don't think on the long run, I still believe that Chelsea should have gone for some short-term fix that will steady the ship while you know, nursing this younger and potential player that they have signed. No, you're 100% right. The only thing about these players, you know, that will sign is they are young, you know. The, the tendency is for them to improve. Mm -hmm. Most young players don't always go bad. They tend to improve. I can give you examples. Look at look at the likes of uh, Salah. Salah was a, Chelsea, a young Chelsea player. You know, we didn't give him a chance. He left and became Salah. Look at the Bruno. The Bruno is, was a, a young Chelsea player. We didn't give him... Um, you know, room, he left and become what he is. You know, a whole bunch of them. Mm. My my partner that was talking about, uh, you know, some of these players that came to Chelsea and what and didn't make him part that, you know, majority of those players were at the tail end of their careers, you know, if you look at it. So buying these young players, in as much as I will not subscribe to giving them that long-term contract, but, you know, buying these new young players, the tendency is for them to improve, uh, you know, to become improve. an asset. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you said, there's still there's good side to it as well. Because if they explode in the next one year or two years, even if they want to leave, then Chelsea you have the right to demand, you know, an arm and leg from yeah, anybody that it. as Real Madrid mm -hmm. usually do. You can, exactly. imagine, you can imagine if by this time next season, Modric is, is the toast of the league and Real Madrid comes calling. Chelsea will say, okay, fine, that's fine, you can get him, but we will we'll give for 350 million. The Saudi right. Arabia market has opened now as well. You know, nobody knows this time they're buying players who are almost finishing. By next summer, it might be they might be looking for players who are actively, you know, you know, pulling yeah, the weights in the in the league. And Chelsea might as well cash cash out on those players. Well, let's see how it goes. Like Bado said, nothing is guaranteed. It's either a, a lot a hit or a miss. Then we'll see how it pans out. Let's go to Poch. Poch is uh, I want to ask you this question and I want you to remove the rep reputation that Pochettino came to Chelsea with. Let's look at what he has done since he, since he came to Chelsea. Have you been impressed with what he has done so far? And uh, what have you noticed that is different from the way the, the team is playing now as regard, you know, compared to all, what happened under Potter and uh, and uh, uh, to Chelsea? Well, well, I okay. Oh. Okay, yeah. Um, if you if you can if you watch JC games every weekend, you can see the differences there. Last season, we struggled to move the ball. JC uh, players we are playing backward passes and doing all that. We couldn't create passes. This time, Poch has changed that. Even though he's going, uh, he's playing uh, Chiwell as a wing back, which I don't like. I don't like that. Why? He's playing to uh, as a wing back because he wants to play Cowell there, which is not even... I mean, he can play a back four and say Cowell will still play with De Sassi or play with uh, uh, with uh, Thiago. Thiago. Yeah, but he doesn't want to do that. And that is why I told you he has to play Modric. He has to play Modric in this game, especially at Stamford Bridge. When the fans are there, that guy is going to be the key for Chelsea. I've been saying that, but I don't know. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, the, some some people do well in training, but they can't perform in mm -hmm. games. So I don't know if it's really what is happening, but I know that guy, we need that guy in games to be able to unlock defenses. So what Poch has done this season is to play forward, you know, forward football, we're going, we're passing quicker. Last season, it was so boring, you know. Sometimes you even forget watching Chelsea. So when Chelsea is moving, you know something's going to happen right now as the game is moving. You see that Stalin is moving the ball. Jackson is up and about. So this is what you need. So defenders are always on their toes. You can't rest. That's why I like Jackson, Nicola Jackson. He tells me more about the draw, but he doesn't have that that uh, physicality of the, the drawback, which I know will come through. He's only, what, 20, 
22. So I know he will come through. So uh, what Poch has done is to make sure when you get the ball, you don't waste time. Find your forward players. Last season, I told you that uh, Stalin was our worst signing and our worst player. I don't know what happened to him last season. In fact, he he is one of the problems that got uh, Thomas Tugu out. Because when you buy players, you want them to perform. You bought Stalin at that age, almost 60, 50 million. So you, as, as somebody like that, you want him to perform. But this season, I think he's, he's gotten his uh, mojo back. He's driving the ball. And he's, you know, taking on defense, the defenders as, as, as he goes. And that is what you want to see. But what Poch has to do is to stop this Chiwa, playing Chiwa as a wing back. We have a lot of wingers there. We have Madek, we have uh, Modric. We have a lot of them. He can't be playing. Chiwa is not, is not going to be, if you want to win games, he can't be playing. Play a back four and then put on your forward. But yeah, Chima, that is me... where he's... Yeah, Chima, let me let me touch base with you. I know you've complained about the Sassy a lot of times, and listen to what those was uh, saying there. I don't think you, as a, a Chelsea fan, believe that the Sassy is good enough to start for Chelsea right now. And for me, looking in from outside, what I believe the reason why the uh, uh, Poch is doing what he's doing is because he doesn't trust those two players, and at the same time, he doesn't really trust the pace of Thiago Silva. Then he needs his presence on the field to you know to kind of guide those those boys into maturity. So and for him to do that, he had to play the three of them. The two the two younger players will probably use their pace to protect Tago Silva when he's exposed. Though in in terms of positioning, they have not been able to do that. Then once you do that, then of course you have to play wing back. And for me, to be honest with you, after Stalin. Chilwell has proven to be the most dangerous player in Chelsea so far. I've seen him arrive in the box so many times on Chelsea attacks, and I've been wondering how, where is he even playing? You know, so I don't know if you believe, you you agree with what Bados is saying by you know that that push to revert to back four, meaning one of those three defenders has to drop. Uh, uh, Chloe for me has good potentials, and I always tell people that. You know, as fans, most of the time, what we see is 90 minutes every week. We don't know what's happening at the, at the you know, from Monday to, to Saturday. A lot of things go to, go on in the in the league. If you remember, the Chloe guy wanted to leave Chelsea this summer. And the promised thing that he was integral to what Chelsea was doing. So it's going to be difficult for Porch to now, for him to now sign that contract. And you don't give him minutes, just like asking for Modric. So it looks like there are other things that you know, Porch has to, you know, take care of in playing in giving players minutes on the pitch. So Tim, I don't know how you think, you know, he be if you're in Porch's uh, shoes, how are you gonna handle this situation and still manage to get the, the, the team going and get results? You you know I pity Porch. The reason I pity him is that um he has a lot of injuries. You know, he's he looks like somebody whose hand who whose hands are tied. Uh, yeah. You know, when you have a lot of when you have a lot of injuries, you make do with what you have. You know, I've always maintained that, you know, a good coach, which I believe Poch is, and, you know, tends not to introduce players that were bought from other leagues, you know, to just throw them. I never said that the size is not a good a good player. I say that, you know, he needs to understand it. No matter how good you are, there is this uh, saying in our local language, you say, the little Karin Yanga come America. She understand. No matter how flamboyant you are in your country, you know, big boyism and everything, immediately you get to America, you, you start to understudy the system. That's exactly what I feel about um, some of these young players. Like I decided that, you know, he is a good player, trust me. But I felt like understudying the league system. But at the same time, if you look at what Poch, what he has in his arsenal, it's not, um, you know, he is handicapped. Even... Like I support, I want to, you know, you know, support what my blue brother said. We in this season, we move ball very well. Can you imagine most of these scoring chances that we we miss? Can you imagine if uh, Christian Ntonko is there? We probably would not even remember that, you know, because he is a good finisher. If you don't know, watch our our um season. 
I was so impressed with the combination of Nkoko and the um, and the Nicholas. We are, are at all times, even the, our last game that uh, with uh, Nottingham Forest, we had a whole lot of scoring chances that a very confident, you know, of course, you know that uh, if Nkuku were to be there, Nkuku might not, you know, he will always be at the, he's, he's a striker, striker. There are players I call striker, striker. Like, uh, I don't want to digress, but you see this Holland that my you bought. Immediately he, he was introduced against Arsenal. I told myself, I said, man, this guy is a striker, striker. You see him, he, he take position. That is somebody, something I see in, um, in Kuku. In Kuku. Yes. So, Sometimes I tend to pity Poch because injury has made decision making a little dicey for him. He is a he is a world class oh. coach. If you saw what he did with no material in Tottenham, he had no no uh, financial firepower, but he was able to take Tottenham without any name brand player, a player apart from uh, Kane. Yeah, I, I, I deliberately kept these stats uh, away to find, you know, to fill out you guys. I don't know if you are aware of this. Let me read it, read it out. And our viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, you will see the statistics on the screen. Chelsea this season going you know, in, in their ranking in EPL going forward. Chelsea is ranked first in crosses. I know that would have been before the uh, uh, James got injured because that guy is dangerous in, in, in putting in crosses. Right. Chelsea, in terms of big chances created, ranked second in the league. I think it's behind City. Passes into the box, ranked third. Progressive passes, ranked third. True balls, ranked third. Touches in the box, ranked third. Successful dribbles, ranked third. Carries into the box, they are ranked third as well. Shots, they are joined fourth in the league and short quality, sixth in the league. So these numbers here don't look bad. They look very uh, uh, encouraging for anybody that's associated with Chelsea, for Chelsea fans. But the issue, the truth of the matter is that as we speak today, after four games, Chelsea seated 12th on the league. I think they've just won one game, drawn one, and lost two. So at the end of the day, the football is a is a result-driven business. Either you win or nobody remembers. Look at what happened between us and Manchester over the weekend. If Manchester United had won that game 2-1, the goal for Galatia had stood and they won that game 2-1. I'm sure the narrative would have been different today. But once, just five minutes after that, Arsenal scored two goals and the whole narrative changed. All of a sudden, there is crisis in Manchester United. You know, So this is what Poch has to bear in mind. This is what these players need to understand that Regardless of what what you're doing behind the scenes, we need to start you know recording these points on the board, and uh, that's what brings confidence. Last season, everybody said Arsenal will not win the league, but people felt that regardless of how good their game looked in the eye, that they didn't have the doggedness to withstand the pressure that will come at the end of the season, which was what happened. This is in four games into the season, Arsenal has not really looked good in the eye, but they have got to results and. That's basically what is important. So I think, uh, I don't know if you guys, but those, just in one yeah. word, ranking Porch in a scale of one to ten so far, where what would you rank him? Um, I'll I'll give him I'll give him I'll give him uh, eight okay. because because he has done everything he's supposed to do, and the only thing is that the the, the goals are not coming. And Chase is still uh, seated on number 12. I'm not worried about that. Uh, Chase is going to climb the table. We just need to win one game and you're up there. But right now, he's done all he's supposed to do. Like I said, his only problem is selection. Uh, uh, Chima was talking about Disasi and, you know, and all that. Yeah, Disasi is a very good uh, player. But remember, he never played preseason with anybody. He hasn't played with any of anybody in that team. I think the only person he's played with is what well, the other injured player, Badi Badi Shile. Badi Shile. Right. Yeah, Badi Shile. So that's that's the re more reason why they bought him. Because I know in games, if that guy is fit, Thiago Silva will see that most of the game because 
That combination is why they bought him. They bought Buddy Shield and uh, the Sassy. That is their, that is your center forward right there going forward. And uh, so as far as Poch, he's done everything he's supposed to do. I like what I'm seeing. The only thing is that the 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 the, the, the points are not showing on the board, which I, I'm I'm sure is going to come through uh, as time goes on. So okay. I give him an eight. I give him an eight. Okay, Tim, I le- uh, well, I saw you nodding. That means you agree with Wado. But let me ask you, who has been your best performer for Chelsea so far this season? Well, without without a doubt, you know, every Chelsea fan will, will give it to Stalin for now. You know, will give it to Stalin. Um, he creates chances. You know, he creates a whole lot of chances for people to score. Even when people don't score, you see him try and score it. You know, he has never been this goal scoring player you know mm-hmm. but one thing you can one thing you cannot uh, take away from stalin is he might create 10 and score one or two but you see him creating you see him you know trying to do his best that is why i i don't want to overkill our team for now because with the level of chances stalin creates in the in the in the 18 if a natural striker comes in conversion will be very easy you know, most of these games we lost, like uh, um, not uh, not Forest game. It's a game that if we had had one good, you know, natural yeah. strike, yeah, we would just score with you know with a wave of hand. Okay, so but I, what does, I, before you answer that question, let me give you a start here so that you know whether you agree with Chima or you're going to go with Enzo Fernandez. As we speak in the league, he ranks first in progressive passes, sixty-four. He ranks first in passes into final third, 51. He ranks first in passes into the box, 17. He ranks first in true balls, 8. And he ranks uh, first at 26 shots creating actions. Best midfielder in the league so far. So between Stalin and Enzo Fernandez, uh, which of them do you think has been the best performer so far in the for Chelsea? <laughs> you know that... Uh... When you like, when you want to give MVPs most valuable player, people tend to go with people strikers because they score mm-hmm. goals. Yeah. But they forget that there are people that are doing the dirty work. So Enzo Fernandez is doing the dirty work, just like uh, 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 Cowell is also doing the dirty work. So as far as uh, your best player so far, I don't know how to choose. But in terms of uh, what we've seen. I think Stalin, uh, you know, is what uh, it ha- is is the Stalin that I used to know. I guess okay. he lost weight. Maybe he lost weight during the summer. summer. I, you know, so I think he's up there right now. So we just need Jackson or Kuku or anybody to just convert the goals, and Chase will be there. But right now, yeah, I think Stalin because he's he's doing all the. Uh, 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 he, in fact, he's checking all the bosses for us. Okay, so who, but Barrow, so let me stay with you. Who will you say is the most underwhelming performer in Chelsea in, after these four games? Underwhelming? Yes. Um, really, I, I don't see. Well, uh, <laughs> underwhelming. Every, uh, they, they've been, they, they've been. Yeah, you know, be, they'll be, be the worst. Oh, <laughs> uh, the worst. I would say maybe I can tell you Kaisodo because you know uh, you can uh, you can you can pay that much and you lose the ball like that. I was going to ask you about they, him. Yeah, and and they are blaming Thiago Silva. Some Chelsea players are blaming. Th- you don't blame Thiago Silva for that. There was no need for Kaisodo to lose that ball. You know that when you look as as a number six, as a holding midfielder, once you lose the ball. And you are playing a top team. You they're going to punish you for that. So I think uh, uh, Kaisedo. I think he still has the money in his head. So he has to cool down and play this game. I think he's the most overwhelming for me. Underwhelming, yes. Tima, do you agree Under, with that? Underwhelming. And sorry. what do you think well, has been the problem of Kaisedo? For me personally, I think he's been a little bit of uh, anxiety because the boy you're talking about, I saw he had a very bad touch and. It, that's what happens when you don't have confidence. We are not sure of yourself because the way he tried to receive that ball, the ball ran off his leg before you knew what was going on. You know, the ball was in the back of the net. So, Chima, do you agree with Bados and uh, what well, can he I, do to you change know, that? I, I, I agree with him 100%. You see, um, that is one of the things I also 
mentioned, you know, like I was, we were talking yesterday, when you buy a player this big, this huge, there's always pressure that comes with that money tag. A good coach will absorb that pressure by putting that player on the bench. Let eyes of the media go out of him. I can give you an instance what uh, Pep did with um, Greenwich. When he bought Greenwich 100 millions of um, pounds, pounds, you know, he never played Greenwich for almost six months. You know, he became like Greenwich was like a spectator. The British press and, you know, their eyes left from where Greenwich was. You know, when he introduced him gradually, 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 until now, look at him. He is like, you know, an integral part. He is the goal creator now for the team. So sometimes coaches should know how to take away pressure from these players by hiding them. When you hide them, you present yourself. But like I still maintain, I don't blame Poch so much. The reason is because he has a lot of injuries. Look at our bench. He has a lot of injuries. So let's, let's, I'm hoping October, November, they say by November, Nkuku is going to come. A whole bunch of players before November, they're going to come back. Can you imagine if James, James is in the field, Nkuku is in the field, a whole bunch of other players. So let's, um, let's not overkill. Yeah, I know we have uh, spoken a lot so far. Uh, you guys have given a uh, some kudos. But uh, as a fan, regardless of how happy you are with what Poch has done for the for the club so far, the, the reality is that Chelsea are not scoring goals. Chelsea are 12th on the league after four games, and meaning 11 teams are ahead of Chelsea, saying Chelsea will climb up. Of course, every fan is positive about their club, but you also know there's a job to be done because those guys that are ahead of you are not just there because somebody placed them there. So as a fan, what do you think Chelsea need to do? What do you think the approach and the players need to do to start putting those uh, <laughs> those points on the board? <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you keep emphasizing the 12. We know we are 12 on the, on the table. Uh, stop <laughs> emphasizing <laughs> that, right? <laughs> so, <the> <laughs> Uh, as a fan, I mean, there's no two ways about it. You have to put the ball in the net. There's no question about it. When you score goals, uh, you give other players the confidence. Everybody will play in well. When, you know, when your strikers and your forward they are scoring goals, there's confidence. Everybody will play in well. But when you don't, then you keep putting pressure on yourself. Like our next game against Bournemouth, you know how it's going to play out. They're going to sit back and try to counter Chelsea and try to score. But if Chelsea can score in the first 20 minutes, minutes yeah. they'll keep, yeah, you know, they will, they, will, they will just win the game. But as as far as Chelsea is concerned now, with the amount of money they've been spending, so the, the whole media is on Chelsea. So when Chelsea come to play, everybody wants to, you know, see the, sit back, the, the sit it out, and, you know, say the negative and uh, see how they can beat, even if it's 1-0. Yeah, you win, and that's it. Three points is... Like you said, it's about three points. And no matter how much you spend, no matter what you do, it's all about three points. And what you have to do is put the ball in the back of the net. And I believe Jackson, uh, 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 Stalin, and Modric are the three players that will do this for Chelsea. And I believe that. So I don't have any doubt that they will come through. From the statistics that I just read out, between Fernandez and Chelsea as a, as a team, it looks like the numbers are looking pretty good, man, of scoring goals. Jackson has played all the games for Chelsea this season, and he has managed to score, I think, just one goal after four games, and he had, had so many chances. If you are to look, I know you have watched all the Chelsea games and you have watched the guy. What do you think he needs to do to improve his goal scoring uh, uh, abilities? I think I think he's anxious. You know, if you see when you're anxious, you put your foot the wrong way. Look at the clear chance that he missed against uh Northern Forest. Northern Forest. You know, on a normal day, a player who is more relaxed, you know, will just place it and move away, you know. So he's anxious, it's like there is this pressure for him to you know to come through. You know, if I were the coach, I would um 
I will calm him down. I will let him understand that. Take all your time, you know. When you let a player understand, or even your child, when you let them understand that, you know, they can do it, encourage him, pump him up. And at the same time, another thing you got to do is, you know, as the coach, tell tell um um your midfielders to shoot. Like somebody like a, a Enzo, although you see him, he doesn't look like a, like a player that has these strong shots. You know, who can shoot the ball very well. But tell him to shoot. Shoot from, you know, 18 yards line. You know, sometimes you don't have to, pass, you know, give a true pass to, you know, shoot. When you shoot, Jackson looks like a player and who likes rebounds. Stopping, yeah. Yes, who likes rebounds, you know. Um, um, this, um, is it Bellingham of uh, um, Real Madrid? Real Madrid. See what he's doing. Most times he's not playing. But you see that anytime a strike, a, a midfielder shoots, he is running into the post for a rebound. You know, and I see such... Jackson is has speed, he has play, he has this flamboyance in him. So I see him as a player who can always take advantage of rebounds. Tell your midfielders to once they get to that that eighteen yard box, shoot. If Jackson score one or two goals, what he needs is to score maybe one one or two goals in the match consistently. If he scores it in this match today and tomorrow, if he has scored like three goals in the league, you start. He will not come down and say. I have been scoring. And yeah, goes I, I hear you. I hear you. I think I agree with what you said. But one thing I need and for me, if I were to be a, a Chelsea fan or a coach, a coaching staff, one thing I think the guy, the young boy, needs to do is he needs to try to stay around the box. I think because he's eager to make impact in the game, he's running all over the pitch to try to help the, the team retrieve balls and play and get involved in the play. But by the time he's in front of the post, the legs are gone. He's tired. He's no longer focused. And, you know, he, he, but good strikers, players that I know that have scored goals for their teams very well, are strikers that hang around the box. We're having the same problem in Arsenal with Jesus. But the difference is that Jesus has Martinelli and Saka, Odegaard, who are scoring. So he's no, there's no too much, uh, uh, you know, expectation of him to score. Because if we're relying on Jesus to score, Arsenal won't, won't be anywhere. So yeah, Jackson, unfortunately, don't have players around him who are taking their chances like uh, Kunku would have done. If Kunku was there and Stalin were there, if they were scoring, I'm sure Jackson wouldn't have that pressure. And in a game, by the time Stalin and Kunku scored the first two goals, he is more relaxed and he will take his own chance. If there's a penalty, it may allow him to take it and he'll beat his confidence. So I think he should, be, he should be encouraged to stay more around the box and you know have the energy and concentration to take your chances. Because when you are around the box, you're able to monitor and understand the movement of the, of the goalkeeper. And so when the ball comes to you, you know where to put it because you're already, the picture is in your head. But if you are out there on the right side, out there on the left side, in the midfield, by the time you get to the CC yard box, it's, it looks like, you know, it's, it's a different picture in your head. And you can, it's not easy for you to comprehend. And most times, you have just a flash of seconds to either, you know, put the ball or miss the chance. So that's what I will I will say, I think you guys have enjoyed the show with you guys. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. I, I decided to, you know, give uh, fans a chance to, for, because they, you know, when we do our review and our preview in the week, we don't have much time to talk about the, the club. We will focus on the, the game of the week. So we're going to be doing this every transfer window to look at how the teams has performed so far. If there's any improvement from what we, you know, the beginning or the, the last time we, we talked about it. And, uh, I think you guys have done justice to, to Chelsea so far. All you have said here yeah, are, are real factors that are impacting on the on the team. Obviously, as fans, also we see the, the natural tendency to to support blindly our clubs. But those have made this prediction that Chelsea is going to win the league. Tim, I was I laughing. Have, I'm not sure if he I don't agreed. have a, I don't I don't have no doubt at all. I'm, I'm not sure you. if Chelsea, I'm not sure if Tim agrees with that. Tim, do you agree that Chelsea is going to win the league? Well, I I just want you know I will be more I will be comfortable if Chelsea goes to Champions League. You know, that's my, you know, that's my this thing. But before, we, I, before say, we'll say it now, say it that you do not, you do not believe that Chelsea will win the league this season. No, <laughs> no, I will not say, I will, I, I, I will not say I do not believe. What I'm saying is, no, no, no. He said, he said, he said, he said he's beating no. Chelsea. And you go, you even go a bet on it. If, I believe if I him, you know, I believe him as my Chelsea brother, you know, anything can happen. But, you know, I, I'm not going to kill myself if we go to Champions League, I will still see it as a win for us. Based on what I'm seeing, and based on what I'm seeing, Chelsea will win the league, and that's what that's 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 my stand. 
and, and I'm not backing that. And Saint when, 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 huh? when Saint you will to... win the league, it's not just about Chelsea winning their games. You know, that means other other teams that you have seen are not it, doing it, well it doesn't matter. When when Leicester won the league, when Leicester won the league, nobody thought they would win it, but they did. Uh, Arsenal okay. fumbled at that time too. So, but like when you came to LA, when you came to LA to watch Arsenal and Barcelona play, all the people you interviewed, not all the Arsenal fans, that had Arsenal fans, none of them thought that uh, uh, Arsenal would win the league. I'm wondering why did they say that? Even though you bought Declan Rice, why didn't they believe that they were going to win the league? So what they are trying to do is then play their expectation. And then when it gets there and they are, um, but when it gets to December, they're on top of the league, they now start shouting, it's our turn, it's our turn. No, yeah, but yeah, if, 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 you, that... if you remember, I told them that for me as an Arsenal fan, I would demand at Mikel Arteta and the and the players that they should win the league this season. I said that, I said it. Uh, of course, I, I didn't so say they would win, win it, but I said I would demand them that they should. That's win. what I'm saying. If if Arteta will go and buy the Clarins for 105 million, why did he buy it? He thinks that the Clarins will take them over the hump. Exactly, isn't it what it is? Mm -hmm. So when you go and buy somebody like you're supposed to win. Even though you're supposed, Arsenal are supposed to win the league last season, but they fumbled because they couldn't keep their nerves. Yeah, yeah, and right. this season, I'm telling you that none of the people that you interviewed in LA here yeah, thought that you're gonna that you're gonna win the league. Yeah, let's so make it about let's make it about when, Chelsea when, now. Forget about no, Arsenal. We're not about <laughs> Chelsea, because when I'm not here, you guys go and attack Chima as if uh, 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 <laughs> Chelsea is the only pro, the only club in EPL. You need, uh, to, you, time, you, you need to make that time and come and be joining him. <laughs> if you do it on a Wednesday or on a Saturday, I'll be here. And okay. I'll tell your your people, uh, Ugum and the Choma, no, no. That, and the Choma, that Arsenal I, will not, that, that Arsenal will not make tough war. I'm I'm telling you right now, Arsenal this season is not going to make tough war. Uh, okay, okay, like guys. Uh, okay, guys. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get back to that. Maybe by the time we'll, and, and see, of, of course, Chelsea is still going to play Arsenal this season. So, we'll well, uh, it's October. We're going to play October. And the Chelsea you played last season, not the same Chelsea. We'll, I'm we'll telling see. you that. And we'll, you're not going to win that game. We'll see that. We'll see that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the show. All I right. really appreciate it. Our viewers, please, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that button right now. Like and share the, the video. And, uh, We'll move on to the to the next team. I, I think we're looking at Arsenal next or or Manchester United, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you next time. And thank you guys for for coming to the show. Uh, peace out, man. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate yeah, 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 yeah. Tima, thank you for coming.